Welcome everybody. My name is Tim Sandy. I'm a Cohesity Systems Engineer. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can connect to SQL servers as a SQL source, be able to create protection jobs to protect those databases using our agent, and then also to be able to do a restore as well as clone a SQL database. So as you see here, I've logged into our Cohesity interface. And in this environment, we have particularly our 6.4.1 Bravo release version. As you can see here, we're in the main summary page. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're going to wanna register the SQL servers. So we're gonna go to data protection here in the navigation pane. And then we're gonna go to sources. Now, whenever using our physical agent, you must register it as a physical server first and then register as a SQL server. This also applies if we're protecting, say, Active Directory domain controllers as well. So whenever we're using our physical agent, so again, to get that granular level backup and restore capability for SQL databases, Oracle databases, as well as uh, Microsoft Active Directory, we will need to register them as a physical server first. So in this particular environment, we have four SQL servers. Now, as you can see, we already have three physical SQL servers registered, SQL server one, two, and three, and then we have them as physical servers, and then we have them register as SQL servers as well. I left one other one, we have SQL server seven, so just to show you how to go about doing this. So we're gonna go in the upper right-hand corner here of the interface and click the plus sign. And we're going to go ahead and add a physical server as a source, because again, remember, we need to register it as a physical server first. So I'm going to type in the FQDN, SQL Server-7. Click Register. And as you can see now, we have registered it as SQL Server 7 as a physical server. And now if we go over to the little three dots on the far right hand side for it, we're going to go ahead and say register as a SQL server. And as you see now, as we scroll down here, as soon as this window gets out of the way, you'll see that we now have the SQL Server 7 that's registered as specifically a SQL server. And it's still going through the full registration process and had just completed. So now that we have registered that, we now have all of our four SQL servers registered as a source so we can create protection jobs for them. Now, servers one, two, and three are in a always-on availability group, so a SQL AAG, and then SQL Server 7 is a standalone SQL server. So let's go ahead and create a protection job. So we're gonna to go to protection under data protection. We're gonna go again and press the plus sign here and we're gonna create a protection job for SQL Server. So we're gonna call, let's do the AAG group first. So we're gonna call this SQL AAG. And for the source, we're gonna select SQL servers. And as you can see, it comes up here. Now, when we have our agent installed, this was that's what gives us this granular look at all of the databases across all the servers that have the agent on it. Now, if you notice, we have this link here that says show AAG nodes. We recognize using our agent which nodes are in an AAG. So I can click on show the AAG nodes. And as you can see here, as I said, one, two, and three are all part of an AAG. So what we can do is we can use this capability of essentially this auto protect here to protect the entire AAG. So we can select all the nodes in the AAG. And as you see, when we do that, it goes ahead and it selects that auto protect for the AAG and marks them appropriately. So basically what's now happening is that it, every single SQL server that's in that AAG is now being protected. If you add any additional SQL servers into that AAG down the road, they will automatically also be protected because we selected all of them and we did the auto protect via the AAG group, essentially. So we're going to click add. Okay, then we have our different policies to select from. Now we could create a very specific policy that we wanted right from here if we wanted. I'm gonna go ahead and just use this default silver policy. This is backup every hour, retain for 90 days, and also do a log backup as well. So we're gonna select that. 
Now from our storage domain level, we only have one storage domain in this environment. Everything's in that storage domain. So as you can see, we don't have any other selection for another storage domain. So that's gonna automatically select that. You're gonna see here that we have some advanced settings. So we can do backup method. We have a couple of different options. You can either do volume based or file based. By default, as you can see, we're gonna do a file based. We can also do full backup copies only. Uh, we can turn that on or off as well as an end date, any QoS policies, pre and post scripts if you wanted to, if you wanted to index, any alerts, SLAs. SLAs only refer to the time in which it takes to do the backup job. So right now, by default, a full backup set at 120 minutes and an incremental is at 60 minutes. Now we do a full backup the first time and then we do incrementals forever for all of our backups. Now you can adjust this time for the SLA. Just keep in mind that if you ever see a job that fails their SLA, it only means that that particular protection job did not complete in the whatever the set amount of time is that either you set or by the default setting that was in there. Again, you can go ahead and go over here and set this. I can say that, you know, it doesn't take that long to do it. So I say a full shouldn't take any more than 60 and an incremental no more than 30. And then I can click protect. And that's how simple it is to create a protection job for an entire SQL AAG group. Now, while this is starting to run this job to do the protection, we're going to go ahead and create one more. Again, remember I said we have four SQL servers, one, two, and three as a part of the EAG. SQL 7 is a standalone. So I'm going to go ahead and create a protection group for that standalone SQL servers. And I'm going to call it SQL Server 7. Again, I'm going to select the source for SQL servers. And the window pops up here. I'm going to automatically, and I'm gonna say use auto protect, and that'll back up all these databases and everything on it. So if there's, on, the, on this particular database server, if additional databases are added at a later time, they will automatically be added to the protection job. And I'm gonna click add. Again, I'm gonna select the silver policy, default storage domain, different settings here. Again, I can make the adjustments on that as I choose to, and then I'm gonna click protect. So we're gonna go ahead and start the protection job. So we created two protection groups, one for the standalone SQL Server 7 and the other for the SQL AAG, which consists of SQL Servers 1, 2, and 3. And as you can see, both of the jobs have completed. Uh, in the SLA column, you can see that both of them met the SLA timeframe that was set, which is a given. And then also the backup job was successful. Now, if we had something to where we archived this out to say a cloud environment, such as AWS, GCP or Azure, or maybe replicate to another Cohesity cluster, you would see the other associated icons here showing that process of either archiving that backup off to the cloud or potentially replicating to another cluster. So we've created those protection jobs. So what I'd like to do now is show the recovery process, how simple that is. It is just as simple as doing the protection job. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a recovery of the Cohesity database that's in the SQL AAG, but we're going to restore it to the SQL 7 standalone server. So let's go to recoveries. We're going to go to recover. Microsoft SQL. And if I want, I can do wildcards. I can just put a wildcard in there. If I didn't know the exact name of the database, you can put it in there. So you can see that we have the Cohesity database, each copy on each one of uh, SQL servers, one, two, and three. And then we have the Cohesity database dash seven, which is on that standalone SQL server seven. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the Cohesity database on SQL server one that I want to recover. Now at this point, um, I can select whichever recovery point I want to use. Now by default, as you can see here, it does the latest recovery point. Now we just created this protection job, so we don't have a bunch of recovery points to choose from, but in a production environment, obviously you're going to have a list of recovery points from all your backups over time. So uh, you could go in here and select change and select whichever one, but again, we only have the one right now. 
Uh, we can restore back to the original SQL Server instance, as you can see here, but I don't want to do that again in this use case. I want to do it back to that standalone SQL Server 7 because, you know, maybe I want to pull some data out of it. Maybe I want to massage some of the tables or something and test it out before I do it to the live production database. Then uh, for the instance, it's uh, Microsoft SQL Server. And then I got to put the path in here, which is specific to this lab and those SQL servers. And the database name, I'm going to say to add dash recovery on it. So I'm going to recover the database and I'm going to keep the CDC and keep those selected. And I'm going to click recover. Okay, so we did the recovery of the database and go back to recovery. And as you can see, it was successful. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And you can see here I have SQL Server Manager up for the SQL Server 7, that standalone server. And as you can see, I had that original QCD DB-7 database, but I just recovered that database onto the server, which was originally from the SQL AAG cluster. So as you can see, we were able to do that very quickly. And here we can um, massage it, do whatever we need to it if we were a DBA. And then afterwards, if we wanted to, we could just go ahead and delete it from here once we've uh, done whatever we've needed to do with it. So going back to the Coecity interface, that is how simple a recovery is. Now, that was recovering uh, the database that was on the SQL AAG to a standalone. We could have done it back to the original. You have a lot of different options, but you can see how simple it was to do a recovery. Now, we can also clone a database in the same fashion as well, too. So if we go to test dev here, you can see that we have this clone option in the upper right-hand corner. So we're going to clone, and we're going to do database. So again, I can just do a wildcard search. And again, let's do that same database, maybe do it from SQL Server 2. And you're going to see the process is almost exactly the same. So we're going to go ahead and select the SQL Server 7, the standalone, the instance. And I do want to rename the database. So I'm going to say clone is what I'm going to call it. So you can see the process is very similar. Again, uh, it's going to do the latest restore point since we just created the protection job and only ran it once. There's only one restore point, so there's no sense in going in here to modify that. And we're going to simply say clone. That's going to start. I'm going to click back to clones, and I'm going to minimize this again. And I'm going to go back to the server. I'm going to refresh it open up databases, and boom, there's that database. So as you can see, we can do a restore or we can do a clone of a database extremely quickly. This holds true whether it's a database or even a virtual machine. Uh, we can do that very quickly. And the reason why is because when we each one of our snapshots that we take have all the metadata in it, essentially they are a full snapshot. It's not like a lot of legacy solutions where you're having to do a recovery. So it's having to rebuild from all the incrementals as well as with the full to combine that all together to give you your restore. You're not, we're not having to do that. Basically every single snapshot that we have has all the metadata to it. And so we can instantly mount that snapshot and make it available immediately. So that's why we can do that that quickly. Now, one distinct difference Again, going back to the Quisity interface here, as you can see, um, it still says running. It just hasn't refreshed. So if we refresh, it's just going to say successful. Now, the difference between doing a recovery of a database and doing a clone is a clone has a nice little cleanup feature to it. So if you click on the three buttons there, you can see we have this teardown option. So we click teardown, say yes, tear it down. And if I minimize this, go back here, refresh it, open it back up, boom, you can see that that clone copy of the database is gone. So again, that holds true for whether it's a VM or a database. Whenever you create a clone, you have that ability to go back into the interface and click tear down and it will delete it for you. So again, it'll delete it out of SQL management server interface or if it's a VM, say in a vCenter server with VMware, it would go ahead and delete it out of there for you. So a nice cleanup process do have some dashboards here and we have one specific to SQL. So if you are using our agent, we have down here a SQL Server dashboard. 
So as you can see, the dashboard is a nice overview dashboard of all your SQL instances. Again, this does require to get any data into this dashboard. It does require using our agent. So once you're using an agent, you will then get this populated. So as you can see, we have four hosts with four instances, as you know. Between all of them, we have 16 databases. It gives you the size, how many protection groups. So we created those two protection groups. We did a one recovery, and the clone just hasn't shown up yet. As you can see, any alerts, database status, successful recoveries, protection runs, and also here's all of your SQL hosts, as well as a list of all your databases that are in those SQL servers. And it shows you the size of them, database status, last successful backup, what protection policies associated to them. So we have a nice SQL dashboard. So again, that completes uh, just a real quick overview of how to protect SQL servers, whether they're standalone or in an AAG. Again, we need to use uh, the, our agent to, in order to get down to this granular level, to also get the information populated into the SQL dashboard, showed how to first register them as a physical server, then as a SQL server, how to create a protection job, how to use the auto protect function, or if they're part of an AAG, how to select all of them in an AAG and use auto protect from that point on, as well as how to do a database recovery to another server, as well as do a clone to another server. So I hope this gives you a nice brief little overview of how we protect databases, what our capabilities are. Thank you and have a great day.